see Rob from Smarter Media. <laughs> a little bit of technical difficulties while everything's crashed, um, but typical in our first ever attempt of a webinar. Um, yesterday's run through always goes smoothly and today's never does. Um, obviously, for those of you who don't know who I am, um, I'm Rob, I'm part of the Smarter Media team. Um, we're an SEO and lead generation focused agency um, based in nearly sunny Swindon. Um, today, our head of SEO, Lucas, um, hello Lucas, is going to hello. tell you all about um, how we can obviously make your website more profitable. Um, this will include a couple of different steps that Lucas is going to talk through. And, um, and yeah, and we'll take it from there. Um, obviously, the end point um, following on from this, later on today, we'll um, announce a winner of our free website audit. So obviously, again, a massive thank you to you all for coming today. Um, we'll be in touch. We'll announce it on Facebook or LinkedIn later today. And um, there's a great opportunity there to see how we, um, obviously, how you can grow your website further. Um, so, Lucas, I will leave it in your capable hands. Obviously, it'd be a nice point to probably introduce yourself, first of all. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Uh, so, yeah, uh, my name is Lucas, and I have a pleasure and honor and privilege to be here with everyone in this crazy time, I think. Um, I believe that uh, I can say happy Friday. However, not many people feel like it's a Friday. Some people are saying to me, like, every day is a Friday right now. Um, but yeah, um, I prepared about 97 slides for next hour and I hope that it will give you a kind of idea what, uh, what to do uh, next with your, uh, with your business, how to leverage organic traffic. And if you would have any problems, then there is Rob, there is a team, there is me. We are always happy to help you. A uh, bit of background about me. My name is Lucas, and I was working 15 years in uh, in uh, online marketing. Now my last role was Zoopla slash Uswitch, and uh, and yeah, that uh, that was that was a very exciting and very challenging role because uh, you, you can imagine Uswitch as a price comparison website uh, was operating on various. Um, uh, markets like credit cards, broadband, mobiles, and so on and so on and so on. And because of that, it was very challenging. We had very competitive area, uh, lots of price comparison websites. Some people were saying that in UK, uh, comparing uh, prices is like a national sport. Then I moved to Zupla, and some other people were saying that looking at the properties, it's a kind of a national sport as well. So very competitive market, but finally I decided uh, that it's a time to move on. And right now I have a pleasure and honor to work with people, uh, with my friends, with my kind of an SEO family from Swindon. I'm upset that I cannot be there right now, but obviously we're living in 2020, so Zoom is helping us to deal with this. So I'm going to share my screen at the moment, and voila, that's are my slides. So. As I believe, we will share the slides later, and uh, yeah, so you know you can uh, you can write down. Uh, obviously, I have a cup, like uh, you could hear on the introduction invitation. Uh, so you don't need to stress if you will miss some parts that will be sent to your email. So. <clears throat> Let's go with lesson one, brand tracking, AKA social listening. And the way how I wanted to present this is with a little anecdote. So you probably can hear that I am not native. Uh, when you are born in Poland, you have Czech surname and you're moving to England, what could go wrong? So um, my name is Lukasz Zelezny, but I was always Zelensky, Zeleny, Zelenish, and so on and so on and so on. And one day I was even thinking that it's time to change this name and surname. And I was so upset that I was like, okay, maybe I should go with something extraordinary as a name and very common as a surname. And I was thinking to change my name to Archibald Smith. And I was about to do this, but then I noticed that there is one Archibald Smith that was living before a uh, Scottish barrister, and he's ranking first uh, in uh, Google, despite from the fact that he's not uh, with us for 130 years, so not bad SEO as for someone who is dead. But obviously, 
uh, you know, um, then I just get back to initial idea and I understood that when you have a unique name and surname or unique name of your brand, your brand name and so on, a non-dictionary word, then you can easily implement a brand tracking. So what is a unique brand name? Yahoo, Zoopla, um, let me go, uh, Netflix. That's our non-dictionary words. And they will be always meaning that whenever this brand is mentioned somewhere online, that means that people are talking especially about this brand. So knowing that, we can move forward by Archibald. And we have a couple of tools uh, that we can use to track brand mentions. One is Talkwalker, another one is Brand24, Fresh Web Explorer, Google Alerts, Brand Mentions, and so on, and so on, and so on. Um, for that exercise, for that part of my presentation, I wanted to focus on the one that is here. So Brand24. So you can see that the prices are different, and obviously, you know, Brand24 is much more affordable, 49 pounds in the basic uh, setup, then premium and then max. And unfortunately, uh, Talkwalker uh, is looking for 445 pounds um, for monthly basis paid, I think upfront for 12 months or something like that. I don't know. So obviously, you know, there is various different tools on different levels. Uh, I think if you've never been tracking brand mentions of your company, you should start with Brand24 or something similar uh, in terms of affordability. So this is a screenshot that I took from one project uh, that I have in my Brand24 uh, brand that is for U-Switch. And you can see that I'm tracking U-Switch for a long time. This screenshot um, been taken some time ago, and here I have um, mentions from uh, 2018 and I can see number of mentions and I can see social reach. So for example, here is a spike. So we know that at 11th of May, something happened that people uh, were more often mentioning our brand, uh, the, the usage brand when I was working there back in the day than other days like here. Um, Brand24 also is able to show you uh, mentions in a nice form of infographic. So you know here that three most active sources are Twitter, web, and Facebook. That's our three sources that we are um, experiencing, uh, we could experience a brand usage to appear the most. And obviously, Brand24 can go deeper, can show you the most active users, uh, where they are from, Twitter, Twitter, Facebook, and so on, and so on, and so on. Most ac active sites, and surprise, surprise, Zoopla is here. So you may ask, what Zoopla have to do with Uswitch? And the answer is that Zoopla acquired Uswitch some time ago, and that's why um, Zoopla mentioned Uswitch so many times. So if that's about me, um, I also have quite a unique name and surname, as you can see, Lukasz Zelezny, nobody know how to spell it, uh, how to say it. And thanks to that, I can assume that there is no other Lukasz Zelezny uh, in the online environment. So um, what am I using this for? I'm, I'm using this mainly for two purposes. First is a sentiment. What is a sentiment? It's what people, what is the emotions behind this mention? So is it positive, neutral, or negative? And that's great to know, because if there is a negative sentiment, then obviously we can react. Uh, if there is a positive sentiment, we can try to, you know, uh, say thank you and try to be closer to people who are brand fans. But also, aside of that, there is another reason why I'm doing brand tracking. It's a link building. So every time that your brand being mentioned, and in this example here is Uswitch, or for example, my name and so on, we can approach owner of this website and say something simple like, oh, thank you very much for mentioning me. Uh, by the way, any chance that this brand, my brand name can link back to my website. 
And if you will start contacting people who mentioned you because you are using a brand tracker like Brand24 and you know immediately where these mentions are happening, then you will see that there is a very high success ratio of people that you contacted versus people who decided to change that brand mention to a link. Why this is important? Obviously because a link uh, is a signal for an SEO. So when a website is linking to your website, that Google is thinking that, okay, your website is probably uh, have higher authority. And also link potentially will give you traffic. Someone will go and click and will be redirected to your website. Um, additionally, what you can what you can find out uh, are the social media authors that are kind of influ influential for your business, and you can see that the most influential for you switch was Britain's Got Talent. And you may think like, hold on, what's going on here? Why Britain's Got Talent? What Britain's Got Talent have to do with you switch? The the answer is simple. The answer is a couple of years ago, uh, Uswitch was sponsoring Britain's Got Talent. And Britain's Got Talent Facebook profile, who have a lot of reach, a lot of fans, a lot of followers, mentioned that Uswitch is uh, our sponsor. And because of that, Brand24 could catch it and could say like, okay, this is the most influential profile that was talking about your brand. Obviously, there is Guardian, there is uh, Guardian News, BBC, um, EE, O2, and so on. And here's another EE because you can see that first is a Twitter and the second is a Facebook. How it works with my personal brand? Uh, once again, Lukasz Zalesny. Uh, so I just set up keywords here with space, without space, and so on, and so on, and so on. With Polish characters. We have these crazy Polish characters. I don't know why, but anyway, we have them. And uh, and yeah, and then I set this profile, you won't believe, in December 2013. And this profile is still running. I can go as far back as 2013 and I can see what website be mentioning me as, as a, my personal brand. And I could see something like that. And I was like, wow, what's going on here? 2,575 mentions, fantastic. Uh, majority of them on Twitter, some of them on Facebook, but then on blogs, uh, we have nine, we have some news website, we, and we have some other non-classified uh, websites. And what I could do, I could start approaching, especially just blogs owners and saying like, oh, thank you very much for mentioning me. Uh, by the way, any chance that this name and surname could be a link to my website. And this is how it looks, detailed view. And one day I saw this and I was like, what's going on here? What is this? Uh, I couldn't read this. Uh, then I realized that this is a Cyrillic. Uh, so uh, it's, I was thinking that either this is Russian or Bulgarian. You know, I, I don't speak, uh, I don't read Russian. I can... Uh, speak a little. I have uh, neighbors who are living three houses away. Sometimes we're doing barbecue. Um, more vodka we have, more fluent I am, because Polish and Russian are quite similar. But obviously, this is not about being fluent or not with Russian. It is because, you can see here, they use my name and surname in the Latin alphabet as well as usage. And then here, I ask them to add a link. And they've been okay. They've been like, okay, sure, no problem. It's like, thank you very much. And I could go to another website. And, uh, and you can see also that you can um, do a brand mentioning, brand tracking through a tool that is called SEMrush. And SEMrush have a very good function that here you can define where are the mentions that are linking to your website and where, the, where are the mentions that are not linking to your website. So you can see that it's catching up nicely, Lukasz Zelezny, and you can go to each of this website. So here is um, uh, premiumcoding.com, here is graphic design junction, here is justcreative.com, and so on and so on.
And here is one example. I could go, I could see that there is a link already. Fair enough. Next. And I could see, oh, here is the link is missing. So I went here and I approached them. And I hope after a couple of days or weeks, they will change that name and surname to a link to my website. So that was about brand tracking. As a conclusion, as a wrap up, um, I would like to say one thing. It's a very easy. You don't need to know much about technical aspects. And this data is extremely valuable. So, so yeah, uh, if you considering or if you never heard before about brand tracking, then uh, please consider this, especially right now when potentially you have a bit more time um, during that quarantine period. You can start testing different tools. There are trial periods and so on and so on. So that, that should give you a nice view on where you are with your mentions. Now lesson two is a gap analysis and you can see logo of SEMrush. This is one of the tools that we are using in uh, Smarter Media. It's a kind of industry standard. SEMrush is an in industry standard tool. And we are always trying to use the best tools for our customers. So I think there is nothing better at the moment on the market in some areas than SEMrush. And one of the function of the SEMrush is to help us to understand what is the gap between our customer and competitors. So in other words, what gap analysis is? Gap analysis is like you would say, okay, what are my competitors ranking on? What keywords they are ranking on? And I am currently not. So I split this part into a couple of sections. Part one, find the leader. So imagine that we have choose.net as our customer. And choose.net came to us and said like, oh, I, we want to do an SEO. How would we as Smarter Media do uh, uh, gap analysis? So here we go. First, we're going to check who, according to the data, is a competitor of choose.net. Uh, and you can see here that that's broadband choices, cable, KUK, ISP uh, view, you switch broadband, broadband genie, and so on and so on. You can see how many common keywords they have. So that means that 10,000 keywords is common to broadband choices and choose.net. And you can see that uh, com, com, competitiveness level is a very high. So this broadband choices and choose.net uh, are very similar in terms of keywords that they are ranking on. So why are we using this? Because we want to follow data rather than assumptions. Obviously, sometimes customers are coming to us and telling us what they think um, the competitors, who, are, who they think the, the competitors are, and we are able to check and we are able to do gap analysis using competitors that came from our clients. But at, on top of that, we are, we are also doing um, uh, the, the, the gap analysis based on the data that we have here. So when we know that, we can also do a little of um, uh, verification. This screenshot is from another tool that we are using. So here was SEMrush and here is Search Metrics. We are also using Systrix and plenty of other tools. Um, but uh, why are we using SEMrush and Search Metrics um, can define what are your competitors. And you may think, why are you using two tools that are doing the same? Uh, well, we are doing this to have like a full view on the market, on the industry, uh, 360 degree spectrum, pretty much um, where we are with, uh, with our customer and where the competitors are. And you can see that there is lots of similarities. Broadband choices is here, money supermarket, money saving expert, and you switch as a competitor of choose.net. So going back to gap analysis, I can say, show me keywords that um, uh, choose.net, um, that usage.com and broadband choices are ranking together simultaneously and choose.co.uk is not. So 
we can see here that we have 18,954 keywords. And do I, can I start doing something with this? Probably not, because this is like too much. I cannot go to my content writers. I cannot go to developers and say like, you know what, there is pretty much 20,000 keywords that we are not ranking and these guys are ranking. Do something about this. I need to dig deeper. So let's start going a little bit deeper. So in that part, I will show you how to dig in this data. Pretty much we will go as deep as this cat on this animal. So first we have here keywords by intent. What is keywords by intent? Normally, like people are very often saying like, oh, you have these keywords which are building awareness, then interest, then consideration, conversion, retention, and so on and so on. I don't think that this is very useful. And for me, it's simple. Green is what I'm taking care of. Blue is not necessarily. Uh, so I'm building this part uh, of, the, of, the, of the journey. This part here is for people who already know my brand, know my business, and so on and so on. These people are typing, you know, uh, the brand name in Google rather than how to do this or what to do it. And questions, why, how, what, where, that are very, very good keywords to start with. Um, now I wanted to step back from SEO for a moment. And, you know, there is Simon Sinek Golden Circle um, start with why. Why, how, um, uh, why, how, and what. And you can see that why is in the epicenter of the circles. So Simon Sinek is saying, if you are starting your business, if you are starting your company, if you are starting to become an entrepreneur, you need to start with why. Not how, not what, with why. Now, knowing that, can we start with why? Maybe not really, because we don't want to start a business. We already started the business. We want to put ourselves into customer shoes. We want to understand how our customer is thinking. And if, our cust if we will put our feet into our customer shoes, then we will see that it's not necessarily why that is the most relevant question. If we will put our feet into customer shoes, we will see that how, and now the size of the circle is telling about the demand. How is the most important? So if you want to start a new business, you're starting with why. If you want to think like you could customer of your business, future customer of your business, you start with how. And for if you start thinking how many times you type how, how go after this webinar to the history uh, of, of your searches and you probably will see a lot of uh, keywords that you type with how. And I wanted to bring you some data for today that it's really like that. It's not like just I made this up uh, and, and that's it. And you will say like, prove me this. And I will be like, trust me. No, 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 no. This is not how we work. We are always... Uh, focusing on data and take a look. So start from how. This is BBC. And BBC, according to SEMrush, is ranking on five million, uh, almost six million keywords. Now, keywords with how is, uh, there is 232,000 keywords with how. With what, 154,000. And with why, only 22,400. I remember one friend when I show, show him this chart and I was like, this is very interesting, isn't it? And he was like, yeah, yeah, I, I'm buying this. I was like, why? Because you know, why? That sounds very philosophical. That's why people are preferring to type how. I was like, that's a very interesting point. So yeah, why is very philosophical? Philosophy is nice, but generally we want to have a solution for a problem. How, how, how? Santander, a bank. You would think bank will not be answering any questions. Wrong, wrong. We have here 11,630 keywords out of 145,000 that contain how. 
then again what and then why is at the end and if you think about this people really writing like why i should have current account no they rather writing how to open current account or what is current account if you type why why i should have a current account bank probably won't be able to answer this question i don't know maybe because you should put money somewhere but yeah generally how 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 that's the place to start and here is another very interesting example wells fargo a very big bank in us and that's our keywords that i pulled from semrush some keywords you can see that according to semrush they are ranking on 767,000 keywords uh, massive traffic and if i will narrow these keywords to questions you see here how to cancel your wells fargo account online how to send money how to get a new card and so on and so on and so on uh, this is even more interesting they are doing a very very good content marketing one of the most prominent keyword ranking on the first place in us is what's my credit score so they have a tool like we have in uk experian or or, or uh, equifax that is able to give you a credit score now people are typing what's my credit score and because wells fargo designed a very very good page that is answering and it is giving ability to people to check this uh, credit score then uh, they are uh, ranking first and people are going there checking credit score but they also see a brand they also see wells fargo wells fargo this keyword here have nothing to do with wells fargo but because wells fargo uh, is having a very good uh, landing page and a very good SEO and the credibility and the authority then Google decided to rank them very high and because of that lots of people who typing what's my credit score first thing they do they're going to Wells Fargo because they're ranking first and Wells Fargo have thousands of thousand people who are visiting their website for free some of them may uh, may even say okay hold on what else i can do on this website maybe i will open account on wells fargo and so on lots of other questions what what is with um with um wells fargo as a brand but obviously yeah what is an escrow account is another generic question that wells fargo don't content marketing on. so <clears throat> this is how they ranking you can see here what's my credit score here are adverts and here is a featured snippet um, so they this is giving them extra exposition because obviously they are in this lovely frame here and people are clicking more likely to this result obviously if they want to click on the adverts but that's another story so let's get to the point analyze we versus them so now let's go back you switch broadband choices ranking together and choose co uk is not so we have eight, 18,954 keywords and we narrowing show me keywords which contain word how and from 18,900 something keyword we are back to 1224 now we will say okay but from this 1200 that contain word how also show me uh keywords that uh, you switch and broadband choices is ranking between position one and 19 so first two pages yeah why because these keywords there are more relevant and we have 182 keywords and that is much much better to start dealing with so now graphical representation where this 182 keywords sit and I will give you a moment is this one two three or four i don't see a chart but you can you can type your answer we will get back there uh after after the webinar is over uh so once again where are keywords that we're looking for which will give us a bigger outreach uh that uh, oh <laughs> i see lots of lots of answers um probably i will check this let me see 
So people are saying three. Let's see where is three. Three is here. I said that we want to expand our keywords. What is three? Three, this area here, that's our keywords that you switch broadband choices and choose.net already ranking together. So we have another person who said one. That's our keywords that only broadband choices is ranking. This is not that straightforward because when I was preparing this first time, um, I also had a problem with understanding this, but I can answer you this way. The sweet spot is where this little cut is. Why here? Because this is the area where broadband choices touching usage.com keywords and is not touching Chusco UK keywords. So in other words, this is as far as I can get with drawing. Uh, this is that guy who haven't had nose and now we are building him this lovely nose so he will be more happy. So that's our extra keywords. They sit in here because that's the common part between these guys and these guys. So if anyone said answer uh, two, then you've been right. So now we have list of keywords, how to use pack code, how to get pack code, how much is two data uh, gigabytes um, of data, how to get pack code. You can see a pattern, pack code, pack code. What is pack code? Pack code is a special code that you're using to move number, phone number from one operator to another. You have this old number that you, are get, you get used to and you want to preserve this number. So uh, you using this pack code to move number from EE to O2, for example. So at the end of the day, we also are trying to make sure that we can quickly rank. So we will say, okay, the final, the final sort is show me keywords with how that competitors are ranking on position between one and 19 and the keyword difficulty, which can be from zero to hundred is no high, uh, less than uh, 84. And I have 76 keywords and here is even more keywords with pack. And you can see here, that's our rankings that usage.com was ranking. And this is where broadband, co broadband choices co UK was ranking. And the same time, choose co UK is not ranking because we're looking for keywords that choose co UK is not ranking. So knowing that we can now go into expand. There is additional tool called uh, Keyword Magic Tool in SEMrush, and we already know that we want pack, how, and code. And SEMrush is saying, overall, I have 17 keywords with total monthly search volume, 8,610. And we can then send these keywords to content writers. They can prepare a big, a guide how to do how to deal with pack code do and don'ts pros and cons and uh, you know maybe even developers can be built a little tool i was doing this a couple of years ago for a mortgage and i noticed that mortgage calculator is a very keywords related to mortgage calculator are very very important uh, and website I was working on was not ranking on this keyword. So obviously we not only wrote the content, but also we built a mortgage calculator. And that way you are using competitors that sometimes are stronger, but not, this is not the case. They may be smaller than you, but they have own areas they ranking just to catch them. So you're using uh, your competitors as kind of a guideline. Um, we can also go to keyword difficulty tool which is another section another uh, part of SEMrush and we can see this lovely table which is telling us every which is telling us everything we want to know so all the questions with how pack code uh, are here how to get pack code from GiveGab how do I get pack code from Vodafone how do I uh, how to use pack code B, uh, BT and so on and so on search volume is here difficulty is here and then 
every keyword is generating featured snippet. So pretty much if you will start ranking high, let's say in top three uh, with this keyword, you have a high chances that you will get this lovely uh, uh, frame that I showed you for Wells Fargo, what's my credit score. So you will be kind of extra, you will get extra exposition because these keywords are questions and questions normally are uh, delivering featured snippets. You can also see trend uh, during the year. So, uh, you know, here is in the beginning of the year, then it's falling down and so on and so on. So lots of very, very important information uh, that we are using as smarter media every day to help our customers. And then summary, a little algorithm and a very nice, I believe, animation that I prepared for you. Step one, find two, three competitors. Not 10, not 20, not one. Two, three is enough, maybe four. Uh, use gap analysis, step two. Step three, narrow keywords by search volume, keyword difficulty positions. So you don't want to have 18,000 keywords. You want to have 100 or 70. Narrow keywords by topic. So you remember, we narrow this to pack code. And then finally, step five, additional research um, via keyword magic tool. And final research by keyword difficulty tool. So that's the gap analysis in a nutshell. Obviously, it's a, it's a very big topic and we don't have like, uh, this is not a workshop, it's just a webinar. But maybe we'll organize a workshop so we can go much, much deeper than that. Lesson three. The snapshot approach to keyword research. So before I said about gap, gap is to create a content that you've been originally not ranking on. Gap is to, for, to, to, to conquer new areas in the search engine land. In the search engine, um, in the search and en search engine results pages, that you start in gaining extra traffic. Snapshot works a bit different. Snapshot is is like you would say, show me where I am ranking right now and how what I should focus on, which keywords I should start pushing up. So for that exercise, we will do, use another tool which is called Search Metrics, and. We will use use switch as an example. And you can see that, uh, imagine the situation, we have 2012 and I'm rejoining use switch. And I always had this approach that I always wanted to prove that it was not only that I was good on interview, but I was also, I could also deliver. And I really didn't like to say like, oh, you know, SEO is taking long time and so on. No, I wanted to be that guy who can deliver quickly. And I decided to, 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 to work, I just created this snapshot philosophy. Uh, so first of all, I could go to uh, search metrics and I could see all the keywords that have a good search volume. So you can see here that there is plenty keywords. And what is very important here, lots of these keywords are pinpointing to different URLs, mobiles, broadband, credit cards, loans, and so on and so on and so on. So we will be attacking different areas of the website. And again, we can say, okay, we want to narrow these keywords because um, if search volume is too high, that probably means that this is a brand name of like BT or EE. We really don't want to take care of these keywords, no matter that we are ranking or not ranking majority of people who are writing EE or BT or Vodafone, they want to land on Vodafone or BT or EE. So what I'm doing, show me keywords that are ranking between position two and 10. If it's on position one, I cannot do anything. And search volume should be between 1,000 and 20,000 searches a month. That will help me to get rid of this third party brands. And this is the second screenshot. And you can see that lots of nice, sweet, generic keywords appearing here. Best SIM only deals, loan but credit, energy comparison, iPhone 5S Gold, that's quite old school. So maybe we'll skip iPhone 4 deals, maybe not, because it's quite old, but live mobile, remortgage, boiler cover, cheap broadband. So many keywords 
and you can see that they are ranking already on position two or lower between position two and ten search volume is absolutely crazy so what i want to do i want to push them these keywords to position one or from position five to position three or from position four to position three or two or one if i can so to do this to prioritize this this is like um uh, research that was showing the click-through rate so how many percent of people is clicking on results uh, when you are ranking first second third and so on and so on at the bottom here you have rankings one two three four five six seven eight nine ten here is a click-through rate and you can see that it's a massive difference if you are first or second and there is pretty much no difference or very little if you are five six seven or some some other rankings i'm not talking about position 11 12 you know we have this this saying that if you if you don't know where to hide the body second page of google that's what nobody is looking at so we are only interested in first 10 positions and let's take by, uh, best sim only deals 18,841 uh, search volume and i'm doing simple math i'm taking this search volume and i'm multiplying by 10 person so uh, for position two and 18 person for position one take a look 9294 visits potentially or 1893 visits when i'm on position two so the difference is pretty much like I can double traffic if I will start ranking on position one. So because of that, I should definitely try to push that keyword on position one. Moreover, I should not think about one, two, five keywords. I should think about 50 keywords a day. And that is 350 keywords a week. And that is a couple of thousand keywords in a year time. So this is how I'm calculating. Traffic index is search volume multiplied by click to rate on position. TI max traffic, this is like a utopia when, when you would be ranking first. Search volume multiplied by click to rate from position one. And then uh, TI diff is traffic index difference is TI max minus TI. So TI max minus TI. And this is my spreadsheet. This is my spreadsheet sorted by search volume and you can see that I have lots of interesting uh, interesting generic keywords, so non-brand keywords and lots of various pages here in various products. Even if one product or two are too difficult to push them up higher, I can find that other products because I have a nice uh, uh, a diff various different products here you can see this first part of the url says what product it is and this is so, uh, sorted by search volume but if i will sort this by ti diff which is at the end i can see what are the best keywords to start from that's my prioritization and i can tell you one thing when we will be sending uh, these slides for you then i will make sure that you will also get a kind of a spreadsheet in excel with uh, example website. I think the website that I done this exercise for is Pimlico Plumbers. Don't ask me why. I was living in Battersea some time ago and every time I was in Vauxhall by train, I was passing Pimlico Plumbers. So one day I just don't have snap, snapshot analysis for Pimlico Plumbers. Maybe the one day they will be our customers. Um, so, this is how it works and and yeah that's the whole secret so if you sort this by uh, by by search volume and and if you sort this by ti uh, div uh, then obviously the the sort is a little different and further down you going with your keywords and the sort is changing so it's not always good to go with uh with keywords sorted by search volume it's it's better to do a little of math and then prioritize these keywords using that map. Um, as a conclusion and wrap up, uh, optimization process. So when you know what keywords you want to rank in, simple uh, and the same what we were doing through years, 
optimize your title tag. Try to rewrite your title tag so that keywords that you want to rank, let's say, best SIM only deals will be included there. Ideally, you will start from this keyword. Strong, uh, use strong tag, use alt tag, use image file name that is containing that keyword. Uh, add write additional paragraph of text with that keyword. Modify H1, H2, H3 headers. Add internal links uh, with keyword um, with keyword as a link. Yeah, so the anchor is a as, is a keyword. And when to use that? First, when you starting working on organic performance. When someone is coming to our office, we are like, okay, let's start with snapshot analysis. Boom. Then the second thing is for website with established history. In a ranking insert. So we rather using this methodology when we have a website with some historical data. For a new website, we would rather start from GAP. And when you when you quickly need to prove that SEO is worth, I know that there is some of you may uh, may um, work with some SEOs that uh, been unable to deliver. This is very frustrating because you're paying money and uh, there is no results. That's why, you know, that's one of the words that we uh, often mention. Quickly, and then conclusions. You're dealing with keywords that already rank, obviously. You're leveraging quality traffic. If you're, if you're ranking on these keywords, that means that uh, the traffic uh, is relevant, that Google wanted you to rank on this keyword. You're utilizing multiple URLs. You're playing search engine game and you're delivering, once again, quick results. And the lesson for Data Studio and Search Console, very quickly, because I also wanted to stay for a couple of Q and A's. So think about that. I have zelesm.uk website, and there is a tool called Search Console, but this tool is not great. This tool could be better. So I'm never using Search Console directly. I'm always plugging Search Console to another tool that is provided for free by Google. How great. Uh, it's called Data Studio. With Data Studio, you can see much, much deeper and you can see much, much more, uh, way more uh, in terms of keywords that you're ranking on um, than if you would be using a normal Search Console. So I'm giving access Search Console to Data Studio and I can pull all the data in this simple, sweet little table. And I can see here uh, lots of interesting metrics, impressions, clicks, and click-through rate. And I can see keywords here, and I can see landing page that these keywords are responding with or trigger. Yeah. So, um, for example, I have here a conference speaker, and I can see here that it, it triggers zelesm.uk slash conference speaker. We have three metrics, impressions, click, click to rate. That's all we need. Now we're going uh, to create, we can export this into Excel. Remember, if, if you want to do SEO for, for your own business by yourself, Excel is your friend. You will be working with Excel pretty much every day. Um, aside of um, uh, BigQuery and SQL and so on and so on, Excel is a must. We are using Excel pretty much to, 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 to every day uh, into very extensive uh, level. And here I exported everything from Data Studio to Excel. And I am doing a, something that is called double sort. So um, I'm sorting this data by landing page and then immediately by impressions. And take a look, this is this, the, the anime GIF I prepared for you. I don't know if I can even draw on this. But here is the number of impressions, and here are the landing pages. And you will see that impressions are going down until one, and then new URL is coming, and the impressions will be going down. Let me show this animation once again. You see? And that way we have this sorted very nice way and this data is telling us much more than 
you know, just random keywords, random pages, and we don't know what to do next. But I can go even deeper and I can, uh, and I can uh, try to make sure that I have this presented even nicer. So pivot tables, uh, pivot tables, and I can now aggregate metrics. So I said, here are impressions, here are clicks, and here is click through rate. And when I aggregated this, then here is article, how find SEO clients, how to uh, get SEO clients without cold calling. And take a look, you have here 640, 525 impressions, 888 impressions, all together for this five keywords, that page uh, been uh, presented in Google 5,283 times and received 51 clicks. So obviously, you know, this keyword is quite good, but this keyword and this keyword generating lots of impressions, but doesn't generate any clicks. So that means that this keyword, these two keywords I should start working on. Another example, a bit of inception, uh, because we are just talking about SEO snapshot method, 712 impressions, nine URLs, and you can see here that we have uh, 363, uh, impressions for that one keyword here, nine clicks. So click through rate is 2.48. Not great, not terrible. If you saw the Chernobyl movie, uh, I love this quote, not great, not terrible. Obviously it could be better, uh, but this keyword uh, here below did not generate any, any clicks for that URL. So I, wish I should potentially review these keywords. And if any of this is relevant, I, sh I should do optimization. Again, going through title tag and so on and so on. H1, H2, H3, uh, additional paragraph of text and so on and so on. And that was it for today. I think we still have some time. So thank you very, very much. And uh, let's, uh, let me, uh, let me co connect to the studio. Thanks, Lucas. That's all great. Um, so, guys, if any of you do have any questions in particular, um, feel free to fire them in now, and um, also use Lucas's uh, vast knowledge to um, to grab any quick questions for your own sites um, potentially. Um, obviously, if anybody does have any questions, um, just fire them through. Um, just again, a massive thank you, Lucas. Um, don't forget, though, guys, later today we'll um, obviously be announcing the winner of our free website audit, um, which has got a few fantastic opportunities in there to demonstrate those areas that Lucas has already talked about today uh, which is really really good and obviously we'll drop you the winner an email but we'll also announce it on facebook on on social later on today but um if there aren't any questions it's no problem at all and um and obviously we can leave you guys to uh carry on sitting indoors and uh drinking cups of tea exactly oh, and oh you're more than welcome lisa <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fantastic, but great webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much. That always motivates us. And, you know, uh, the feedback like that is something that... Um, oh, oh, we're getting some questions. Fantastic. Yeah, out of main... Yeah, come on. Don't be shy. That's the moment <laughs> to ask lots of questions. So let me... Right. Uh, Rob, maybe you can moderate. No, and no problem. Um, cheers, Scott, for the message. So he said, out of the main topics, is there a best area to start? Absolutely. your website? So Scott, start with tools that are available for free there. Make sure that you have Google Analytics uh, configured. Make sure that you have Search Console configured. And there is one more tool that you can connect Search Console and Google Analytics together for free if your website have little traffic at the beginning. It's called Keyword Hero. Uh, next step, you can consider to buy access to platform like SEMrush, for example, just to do a little better research. In terms of CMS, again, depends what kind of business you have, but in most cases, I would recommend to go with WordPress because WordPress is great for SEO, is very easy to optimize and uh, is free. So yeah, also, um, you know, make sure that your hosting is fast because the page speed is one of the critical um, critical uh, factor for for ranking. Great stuff, thanks, Lucas. Um, thanks, Phil, for the message. Um, you've mentioned a number of different tools, Brand Twenty Four, Semrush, etc. Um, how many tools would you recommend subscribing to? Well, for you know, um, 
we obviously in smart media, you know, like we, we are using plenty, but that's, that's the, the, the agency, agency life. I think for a business, I would recommend to go with one tool that is trying to merge a lot of aspects of SEO and not only SEO. <coughs> if someone, uh, so, so it can be, it can be similar, it can be search metrics, um, and, and, uh, and yeah, it can be link assistant suite. Um, and if you really, really, if you are really, really big fan of SEO and you really want to dive deeper, then you can go selectively with extra tools, but that obviously will generate extra cost. Great stuff. Thanks. Um, obviously another question from Matt and Jeffrey, which is awesome. Um, what's the best way to identify what keywords to use for your business? I have a pretty good idea, but wonder if there are any tools that are best for this. Didn't we skip uh, Chris? Uh, we, we, uh... Oh, ah, Chris asked a very similar question to Scott around the main topic, so the best areas ah. to start. Um, okay, so well, we've the covered first that one. Thing you would usually, usually suggest to investigate first. Um, what is the first? So, so let me answer Chris' uh, question first. The, the 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 first thing I would suggest to to go through is a page speed. And you can go with plenty of page speed tools that are available online and see how fast your website is. And uh, you know, make sure that website is light enough to load fast, especially on mobile devices. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, so uh, that's time. one. That's one thing. And then we have Matt. Um, what's the best way to identify what to identify what keywords to use? For your business i have pretty good idea but wondering if there are any tools well this is a very good question you know back in the day people were using uh, google keyword planner which is provided by google but i think you can go a different way there is plenty of tools uh, that are providing you uh, proper keyword research and i would say again semrush search metrics systrix spyfu and uh, that's are the four that I would um, um, Uber suggest uh, five tools answer the public uh, six, but you should stick with one or two. Don't go with all of them because that will generate lots of costs. And Matt, as you remember, I was showing uh, during the gap analysis that there is keyword magic tool. Uh, that tool is a very powerful tool um, that you can use. You can go and you can say, for example, I don't know, uh, let's say um, you are, I have this, this air, air, air purifier, yeah? It looks like that. And I can type air, um, air purifier and I can go into language, um, English, and I can go into country UK and I can, for example, pull all the questions that people are asking in relation or that contain air purifier. So that would be the way I would suggest you to go with that uh, initial research of the keywords. And then second step is that if you have a search console uh, access, uh, then you can, after a couple of days, couple of weeks, see what, you, what Google started making you ranking on and start leveraging these keywords if they are relevant. Great stuff. Cheers, Lucas. Um, I think we've got another question from Chris and then one more from Jules, I think. Mm -hmm. And also, well, most important question, we'll jump to the end. Where did you get the hat? <laughs> the hat I get from Soho, London. There is one shop that is selling them. And, um, yeah, and I need to be very careful because I don't know when I will be next time because of the COVID. <laughs> um, cool. So we've got two questions left. Um, so obviously Chris has asked a qu another question. Um, with keywords, is there a fine line between forcing keywords with an additional paragraph, losing your company message and using, and using them within relevance to your content? Absolutely. There is a very thin line between keyword stuffing and keyword optimization. So um, if, you, if you think about us, we are always working with content writers who can say like, <coughs> guys, Take it easy um, because content writers have a little different perspective. When I was working in Newswitch, we as SEOs, I, I was managing a team of six and then in Zoopla, a uh, team of 10. Uh, we always been players 
that are on the second line. We were not liberals. We were always using our gatekeep uh, uh, gatekeepers, our, our content writers as a gatekeepers. They were saying yes or no. They could refuse changes and we should then think a bit deeper. So obviously it's not about like putting as many times repetition of the same uh, keyword because that will not work. It's just to make keyword more relevant using some synonyms and so on and so on. Oh, great stuff. And one very specific question from Jules. Um, hey Jules, um, one, of, one of my clients has a website where most of the copy is embedded into an image to create the pages. So each time it needs an update, an Illustrator file is created, then a PDF, and it, then it's uploaded. Um, does that have a negative impact on SEO? Um, sorry, which one is this? Um, this is actually in the chat, um, as opposed ah, okay. to the Q&A section. Okie dokie. Scroll up a little bit. One second. Okay. <clears throat> One of my my clan has a website where most of the copy is embedded into an image to create page. So each time it needs to update an illustrator. This is this is really bad. This is really bad. I mean, look, it can be that your client don't care about the SEO because there are websites like that. Keep it as it is. But uh, for an SEO perspective, this is really bad. Also, this PDFs always should be excluded because Google can index PDFs, but then you, your customers are landing on PDF and then what? No navigation bar, no internal links, nothing. You know, so uh, long story short, it's not that great for SEO. Cool, great stuff. Yes. My client tells me about SEO and why we aren't ranking. Brilliant. Get on it then, Jules. I love to hear it. Um, Perfect. So again, Perfect. I don't think there are any more questions that are fired through, but thank you yeah. very much for those questions, guys. Um, I, pres I, I presume we'll leave it there then. Um, like I said um, earlier, we'll obviously announce the winner of our audit um, later today. Um, I hope you all enjoyed it, and thank you, Lucas, for your time. Thank you very much. Everyone stay safe, and yeah, and if you have any more questions, then obviously contact us here. <laughs> Thank you. Perfectly placed. Take care, guys. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.